by far one of the most important factors to you making money from day trading is having a strategy you can stay consistent to and that makes money over time. The biggest reason that day traders fail is because they either don't have a strategy they can stay consistent to, therefore they switch strategies all the time, or just place random trades while they lose money in their account. Or they have a strategy, but it doesn't make money. So they place trades with a losing strategy until they get too frustrated to continue. So I thought, why not shoot a video that can fix that? And that is why in today's video, I'm going to be showing you my favorite and what I consider to be the best day trading strategy that I've found over my 10 year trading career. And this tutorial is going to be from beginning to end. That way, no matter where you are in your trading journey, by the end of this video, you'll have a complete understanding of this strategy. And hopefully that will get you one step closer to accomplishing your trading goals. So if that sounds good, go ahead and smash that like button for me. Go ahead and hit subscribe if you are new because we come out with content like this each and every week. If you're already subscribed, welcome back. I'll see you on the other side of the intro and disclaimer. In order for you to make money trading this strategy, you must understand how to identify trends on a price chart. For that reason, throughout a majority of the beginning of this video, it is going to be focused on teaching you how to identify trends correctly on a price chart. But we are also at the beginning of the video going over a live trade I had using this strategy yesterday. So you can see that I use it in real markets with my real account. And also you can see how I use it in real time. Then we're going to dive into that trend identification lesson. Then we're going deep in the entire strategy itself. There's a timestamp beside me on one of these sides. If you already know how to identify trends after watching the live trade, feel free to jump ahead to the actual strategy itself. But with that said, let's go ahead and dive into the live trade and I'll be right back to ensure that you understand how to identify trending markets. See you in a second. So here we are on the Aussie Canada five minute chart, looking at a trend continuation trade that's based on the strategy that you're going to be learning throughout this video. Now I'm going to have to wait to see this market either hit my stop loss or hit my target. As you can see, I'm already in the trade, but with the power of editing, you're going to see that right about now. So as you can see here on the Aussie Canada five minute chart, this trade ended up working out perfectly, pushing down and hitting our targets for about a 2.4 to one reward to risk ratio and banking in over a couple of thousand dollars over a very short amount of time. This was just a couple of hours here using the day trading strategy you're about to learn throughout this video. And we are going to completely break down this trade and the entire strategy a little later in the video. But right now, as I said earlier, the only way for you to be able to make money using this strategy strategy is by understanding how to identify a trending market. So let's dive deep into identifying trends on a price chart right now. Just to be clear, I do not only use this strategy for day trading and I also do not only use it in the Forex market. This is a strategy I use across all time frames and across the stock Forex and crypto market that I trade in. So now that that's cleared up, Let's get started by explaining the difference between major and minor swing levels because that is something that is absolutely necessary for you to be able to identify trends in the Forex market correctly. So first off, for major swing levels, they are the top and the bottom of our impulsive moves. Let me explain that. An impulsive move would look like this. Here's the bottom of our impulsive move. This is the move that breaks through previous structure. That would be our impulsive move. So the bottom of this would be a major swing level. The top of this move would also be a major swing level. Now, as we get this pullback, the bottom of the pullback would be a major swing level. And then we push up as we break through previous resistance and we get the top of an impulsive move. This is a major swing level. Then we pull back the bottom of the pullback, major swing level, and the new structure high as we push up here and break into new highs is another major swing level. So there's not really any way to make this completely objective. And I know that sucks. I know it's a lot easier with completely objective rules, but I've not found a way to make this completely objective yet. But this is the way I identify major swing levels is the top and the bottom of my impulsive move. Remember in a trending market, a trending market can look like this and do this 
and then go up and then do this and then go up. And the levels we're paying attention to are major swing levels during a trending market. What I mean by that is we have a high here. Once we break through that high, what's our rule? Once we break through that high, we can't see the market come down and break through the lowest low of the pullback. If it does, then we, don't, we do not consider this market still in an uptrend. But as long as we stay above it like we have here, then we are considered to be still in an uptrend, especially when we come up and start breaking into new highs. That confirms the continuation of that uptrend. So the major swing levels in this case would be our initial starting point, our new structure high, our pullback, our new structure high, and our pullback. Now, the thing is, you're not going to know this is a major structure level or a major string level string level excuse me a major swing level until we break into new highs and that's just that's just because this is the level we don't want to see broken by the trend so that's totally fine we need to see the market break into new highs before we know that our pullback levels are the bottom of a pullback there's no way to know that this is the bottom of a pullback until we break into new highs because the pullback could continue 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 right so with that being said hopefully now you understand what major swing levels are in terms of mi minor swing levels it would be everything you see in between so this would be considered a minor swing level this minor swing level minor swing level minor swing level in terms of a trending market we do not pay attention to those we do not use those for anything we'll do a bearish example now though and what i want you to do while we're looking at this chart is try to point out the major and minor swing levels for yourself i'll give you about five seconds pause the video if you need to and try to point those out before i do Hopefully you pause the video and have those pointed out now, but this is how drawing out major swing levels in this bearish example would look. We would have a starting point up here as a major swing level. The market would pull down. What are we waiting on? An impulsive move must break previous structure. So now that we have this big move down, we can see that it actually broke a previous level of structure. So now we know this is an impulsive move. Then we get a pullback and we don't know that this is the top of the pullback until what? until we actually break through this support level. Once we do, we can now count this as a major swing level as well. This is another major swing level. And we know that now this is a major swing level. Once we break through that, we continue pushing down and here would be our next major swing level where this heavy pullback starts. Now what our next swing level would be is the top of that pullback, which is right here. After that, the next impulsive move we have. Remember, an impulsive move must break our previous level, our previous major swing level. So if we draw a line right here, you can tell that this would be our next drawing point. This would be our next major swing level. I know a lot of you probably said this was a major swing level, but we don't have a break of our previous major swing level right over here. So with that being the case, there's no way that we can count this as a major swing level. So this would be the way we would draw out this trend, then the top of the pullback, another major swing level, pushing down, we have to break and close below structure, we do that right there. So now we have a push down, and this is our next major swing level. What's the next thing we need to see? If this market's going to reverse, and we're gonna find another major swing level, we need to wait for the break of what? This level here. After we get a break of that level, we can find our next swing level before the market pulls back and then continue looking for major swing levels in order to determine trends in a specific market. Now, again, there's no way to have this completely objective, and it's something that you will just have to spend time learning and understanding. Let me show you an example of what I mean, though. One of the things that I was talking about is this, right? We have a situation where we have what? A major swing level here because it's the bottom of an impulsive move as we push down from our pullback, bottom of impulsive move, pullback, break. This is our impulsive move. So the bottom of that is determined once we get this big push up and we break above this resistance. With that being the case, this is definitely a major swing level. This is definitely a major swing level. And in terms of this now being a reversal, we're considering this market to be in a possible reversal until we break and close below here. And this being a major swing level, what's our next major swing level? The bottom of the pullback, right? But we can't call this the bottom of the pullback yet. Why? Because we don't know if it's going to be the bottom of a pullback. To show you an example of that, if we move this market forward, you'll see that we start to get another lower low right here than the previous low. So now is that the bottom of the pullback? 
No, we don't actually know the bottom of the pullback until this level's broken. So we have to hit play. Just kidding. Apparently market replay doesn't want to play right now. We have to hit play. Still not working. Okay. I guess you'll just have to hear a bunch of clicks. As you can see, we eventually drop down even lower at this point. So now we still can't consider this the bottom of a pullback. The reason being, we haven't broken above this level. So we still have to wait and see if we can eventually break through this previous resistance level. Once we get a break through that previous resistance level, then we know we have a major swing level. And this being the case, this only being known after the break of this resistance level is totally fine because the only reason we're using this major swing level is to identify that the trend is still intact. At this point, since we have identified this as a major swing level, we have our low to high, our major swing level after we see the break through this, we now know that we are still in an uptrend. No matter what happens in between, consolidation-wise, unless we break through our previous major swing level. That's why it's okay that we have to wait for a break of this high in order to identify this as a major swing level because the reason we're using this major swing level is just to give us an idea that this trend is still intact. So we need to make sure that the market and price in general stays above this swing level so that we can clearly identify that this trend is still intact no matter what happens in between, as long as we stay above 1.2144, then we are still considered to be in an uptrend. And that's the way we're using these major swing highs and lows. Hopefully that made sense. Now what I wanna do is walk you through trending markets and kind of give you a lot of examples of trending markets to help you more clearly identify trend in your own trading. So let's do that right now. Okay, so here we are on the Euro Aussie four hour chart. And as you can see, uh, in a normal situation, this would be kind of difficult to determine the overall trend of this market in certain situations, right? I mean, as you can tell, yeah, we're going in a slight uptrend, I guess you could say, but there's a lot of choppiness in between here. And this is the reality of markets. It's not what you see on YouTube when people are cherry picking stuff. I do it too. That's, there's nothing wrong with that when you're trying to show an example, but what helps traders more in my experience, is showing examples that look like normal market situations that are choppy like this. So let's draw this out with the rules that we have from a starting point right down here. So this was our starting point. We're going up impulsive leg to a swing high. We have a swing low to a major swing high. At this point, what are we waiting on? We're waiting on the bottom of the pullback to be our major swing low. This would be the bottom of our pullback. The only reason we know that is because it breaks resistance here. So at this point, the way we would draw this out is to our next major swing low, which is right here. And then the next major swing high, remember, we have to break and close above this high. We actually don't do that until right up here. So this would be our new major swing high. At this point, in terms of uptrend, we know that we are still in an uptrend unless the market breaks below this level of support. So if it helps out while you're practicing this and drawing it, do a horizontal line at all your major swing lows during an uptrend and at all your major swing highs during a downtrend in order to be sure that you're still in line with the trend while you're practicing. So at this point, everything that happens in between our new structure high, as we start pulling back, this would be our major swing level just because we've started to pull back now by more than a few candles. And if that's the case, after breaking here, when we start pulling back by a few candles, we know this is our next swing high. So we have that as our swing high. Now we're pulling back everything in between here is just consolidation. There's nothing that I personally am going to be trying to trade at this point in this consolidation. If I get a deep pullback, maybe I try to trade that, but this isn't a lesson on actual trades. This is just me showing you trends. So in this case, why don't you try to point out what our next level would be? Since we can see price right here, what would our next level be? Our next level would be the bottom of the pullback, right? All of this in between is consolidation, but essentially it's just the pullback of price. It's just relief from our new structure high. After we have that relief, we then push higher. Where do we break and close? right here on these candles. Do we start pulling back by a few candles afterwards? We do, so now this is our new structure high, new swing high, and this would be our major swing low. Hopefully you're seeing that at the point that we break and close right here, we now have our new swing high. So we're drawing out our major swing levels, major swing, major swing, 
major swing, major swing, already circled, major swing, major swing. This we know is a major swing once we get a push up and a break and close above our previous level. So the way we would draw that out is like this, swing low up to swing high. At the point that we close above this, right here, we know that this pullback comes to here and this is our new swing high. We now need to break and close above this. Once we do right here, we know that the lowest low of this is our pullback level and the break and close of that is our new swing high. Hopefully this is becoming easier and easier, pointing out swing highs and lows, major swing highs and lows. So at this point, we've been continuing in this trend from our starting point. And although it looks choppy, if you were to trade with this trend, you would have won one, two, three, four, possibly five different trades before eventually the trend ends. And that's something we'll discuss now. Trends do not last forever. They will end at some point. And our first hint, the first hint we have that a trend is likely to end is this right here. Here was our previous major swing low. How do we classify this as a major swing low? Well, we had our pullback to our swing high. The only way we can classify this as a major swing level is after we break and close above the swing high. So once we have that move, you can put a horizontal line here or circle it, do whatever you have to do to understand we're in an uptrend unless this level is broke and closed below. As soon as that happens, as it has just now here on the uh, Euro Aussie, excuse me, here on the Euro Aussie, just as this happens, you know that this is a market telling you that it's likely to reverse. This is a possible reversal situation. And after this happens, we're no longer looking for a bullish trade because we're no longer in a bullish trend. If we're trading with the trend, now what we need to see is the market either come up and break this resistance again, like so, I'll move the chart, like this, in order to show us we're back in an uptrend and then we can start buying pullbacks again or the market to come down and break below this support level. Because at that point, we have what I call a one, two, three reversal move. And if we break this major support level or major swing, then at that point, this would be considered a downtrend. So that was the bullish examples of this. What we'll do now is go to a different chart and I'll walk you guys through a bearish example of all this to be sure that you have a complete comprehension of how to read major swing levels and how to read trending markets in the bullish and bearish direction. So let's head to a bearish example of all of this right now. All right, so again, with a bearish trend, it's really easy to spot markets that are doing this and say, okay, that's a bearish trend. But a lot of times markets look more choppy than this, right? This is what a real bearish situation will look like, and it's choppy. You can't really point out, easily point out major swing levels unless you have some type of rule, which is what I've been explaining throughout this entire video is my rules for major swing levels. So what we're going to do is start right here with this being our starting point, our first major swing level. With this being a major swing level and this being our previous level of support, where's our impulsive move end? So what we have is a market pushing down, right? Swing high, major swing high to a major swing low. And once we start pulling back by a few candles, I don't have an objective rule for this again. I normally want to see more than two candles and a decent pullback. But again, this is just something that will come with experience. There's no real objective way to identify a, a pullback. Again, one of the better rules I have is at least two candles and I want to see some movement. I'm not talking about two candles like this. This is not, this isn't really a pullback. This is just two really little candles before a breakout to the downside. I want to see an actual pullback and I want to see it consist of at least two candles would be one of the better ways I have of identifying a pullback objectively. So if this was our impulsive move, this is our pullback. What are we waiting for next? We're waiting to see this level of support broken and closed below because at that point, one, it solidifies that we are in a downtrend, right? If we have that break, then that is a guaranteed downtrend. If this was a reversal move, this would be our one, two, three move. We are now in a downtrend. We know that for a fact. Awesome. We're in a downtrend. And we also need this level to break so that we can classify this as the level that can't break for us to continue in a downtrend. Because once we have a break of this major swing low, we know that this is the top of our pullback and the top of our pullback, our major 
swing level at the top of the pullback is a level that cannot break if we're going to continue in the downtrend. And if it does break, then that's showing us a possible reversal. So in our case that we have on the chart, that does not break. And instead, we get a continuation down with the market pulling back, making another swing high, major swing high. And the only reason we know that's a major swing high is because we get a push and break below this level right here, our previous major swing low. So at this point, what we know is that we cannot come up and close above our previous major swing high. And we need to close below at some point this level. But if the market was, let's say, if I can actually get market replay to work right here, the way we are looking at this in terms of actually placing trades is that we are looking for opportunities to go short or sell the market in anticipation that it goes further down as long as we stay below this level at 1.0851. As long as we stay below that, then we are consistently looking for possible short trades to ride continuation to the downside on this particular bearish trend. Let's see if the play button works now. Not so lucky, so I'll, with the power of editing, show you what happens in just a second. So as this pullback comes up, what we get is opportunities to go short and to ride this trend down, and we will continue to do so again unless this level ends up being broken, which is something that has not happened at this point. And instead of that happening, what happens? We get a breaking close below this level. Again, keeping us in the bearish trend, showing us that this market still has momentum to the downside. We also can now point out our lower high that should not be broken if we're going to continue in this downtrend. There's our lower high here. And this level cannot be broken if we're going to continue in this downtrend. But here is when something a little bit different happens. At this point, what do we have? We have a push down to a major swing low, and then we have a break and close above our previous swing high. What is this telling us? What this essentially means, and we've talked about the mass psychology that charts show us, what this means is indecision. The market no longer wants to go lower because we broke above the previous pullback. So that's telling us that all market participants are showing bullish pressure, are saying that the value of this asset is undervalued. We think the price should be higher. But at the same time, we have a ton of market participants, market participants that think the value should be lower by this big move down. All this shows us is indecision. In trading, we call this consolidation. And this is the first sign that we are about to see consolidation and indecision. And also it's our first indication to not trade. If we're gonna be trend continuation traders, this is exactly what we do not want to trade during. This is when all of our losses will occur. So spotting the first step of spotting consolidation is understanding trend continuation. Because if you understand that this is a level that can't be broken, if we're going to continue in this downtrend, then you also understand that it means the market is having a lot of indecision if this level is broken, because we just went from being in a downtrend to being undecided if we want to continue that downtrend. So at the point that we create this move, what we do then is we have a level here that is now our new high. We have a level here that is our previous low before I can trade again in this specific instance. I need to see one of these levels break and everything in between these two levels is just consolidation. It's just minor swing levels until the market shows me that it wants to con continue in one direction or the other like it does right here. So that's showing me now we have defined bearish pressure because we broke below this low and I can look for possible bearish trades. There was an in-depth tutorial on how to spot major swing levels and use those major swing levels in order to identify trends in any particular market and on any particular time frame. And I know that was a very long section, but you're going to understand why it was so important as we start to get into the strategy itself right now. So let's dive in. For the strategy you're learning today, we're going to align ourselves on the correct side of the market based around trend, which is why that last section was so important. But the specific way we are going to do that is by utilizing two time frames. Our first time frame needs to be one time frame up from the time frame we plan to trade on. And we're going to dive into that in just a second. And our second time frame is going to be the time frame we actually place the trade on. So here on the Aussie Canada, the trade was placed on a five minute chart. So what I mean by what I just said 
is that the, where we find the trend of this market in order to be on the right side of the market when we place our trade, we want to be in line with the higher time frame trend. In order to find that, if we're trading the five minute chart, then I'm going to look one time frame up to the 15 minute chart. Now, as you can see right here, this is all the time frames that I use. So I always go up one time frame with this strategy. If I'm trading on the 15 minute chart, then I'm going up to the one hour. If I'm trading on the one hour, I'm going up to the four hour. If I'm trading on the four hour, I'm going up to the daily. Now I rarely go up any higher than that, but that is the exact difference in time frames that I personally use. So again, on this chart, what trend are we in? You can tell because I already have it drawn out for you, but this is an obvious downtrend because we have a starting point right here, which is one of our major swing levels. We then have a major swing level here, a major swing level here, and a major swing level here, followed by a lower high major swing level and a lower low major swing level. This tells me that I'm definitely in a downtrend. I know for a fact I'm in a downtrend at this point. So if I want to align myself on the right side of the market based on my higher time frame trend, then I want to be looking for short trades. So the first step in this strategy is we are aligning ourselves on the right side of the market using higher time frame trend. After we have our higher time frame trend, another reason that it was extremely important for you to understand the concept of major swing levels is because once a major swing level is broken, that is the level you want to look at for trend continuation. So as this market pulls back up to this area, that's where I want to look for possible opportunities to hop on that trend and ride it to the downside. As you can see, this works out very often. If we go back right here to our previous major swing level, yeah, I know I widened that area a bit, but these are zones, not just lines on a chart. You can see that this is exactly where the market pulled back to before pushing down and breaking another major swing level. So we're expecting that to continuously happen until the market shows us it doesn't want to do that anymore by breaking through this major swing level, our resistance level, and creating a possible reversal. So with all that being the case, after identifying my trend and identifying the previous major swing level that was broken on my higher time frame, and in this case, that is the 15 minute chart because I'm planning to trade on the five minute chart, the next thing I do is extremely simple. I just drop down to that five minute chart. I wait on the market asset, whatever it is I'm trading, I wait on it to come back up into this area. And then I want to see rejection. And I have very specific rules for that rejection too. I'm not going to leave you hanging on the entries and don't worry. The whole point of all of this, by the way, is to make sure we have, what did we say at the beginning? If you're going to be a successful day trader, if you want to make money from day trading, you need a strategy that's rules based so you can stay consistent to it and it's proven to make money over time. This is a strategy I've used for nearly a decade and it's proven to make money for me during that time. And it's also so rules based that you can stay consistent to it. One rule is higher time frame trend. Let's align ourselves with that. Second rule, look for the last major swing level that was broken. You know how to do all that if you paid attention throughout the video already. The third rule is rejection. And the way we're looking for rejection is by looking for the market to create a high, come to that high and then be rejected from it by pushing lower. This is known as a double top and it's an extremely simple price pattern that I use for entry reasons. Now, one small caveat I do have is that after this double top, I want to see a red candle. So we have a test, we have our second test of a resistance level, and then I wanna see a red candle here for the push down. You will see that on the chart for this trade right now. Okay, so here we have the market exactly where it was whenever I entered this trade. Everything's lining up about the rules we just discussed. We're in line with our higher time frame trend. We're at the previous major swing level that was broken. What did I say I was looking for? Well, as you can see, as we push up here, we get a high, but then the market's not ready to continue lower because why? We break through that high and make a higher high. So at this point, I'm not interested in going short and trying to ride this trend down until I get actual confirmation. And do we get it here as we push back up? No, we get a move up that ends up closing above our previous high. We get no rejection at this level. So what I'm waiting for 
is when this market is pushed down, we get a push back up to that same level. And then we see rejection, rejection being this red candle right here. And my exact rules for this, I'll go ahead and share them with you, is that for a double top, I am looking for the market to push up and get between the high of the wick and the highest bodies of this entire little area. And I'll explain that in just a second whenever I get this a little bit darker for you. So this is my area. It's between the highest bodies of this previous swing high and the highest wick of this previous swing high. What I want to see is wicks of candles touching this area. Bodies of candles can close in this area. The only thing that cannot happen is I do not want to see a close above here because that's exactly what's been happening, right? That's not showing rejection. Close above, close above. What I want to see is rejection. So a wick needs to get into this zone or a body needs to get into this zone of a candle. And then I want to see a red candle showing me that sellers are trying to take control. When you combine all of that and you have your alignment with a higher time frame trend, you have the market inside of a major swing level, the previous one that was broken, that is major structure. And that's one of the most likely places for a market to continue in trend. And you add all of that to an objective entry reason as powerful as a double top with selling pressure afterwards, that being that red candle, then what it creates is a consistent way of trading because there's rules for every bit of it. So that, that equals consistency, right? And it creates a money-making edge played out over a large sample size, at least from my own point of view and my own trading that I have done with this strategy. It has been one of the best I've discovered in the past 10 years of my own trading career. And we all know already how this bad boy played out, but we'll hit play and watch it one more time because it was a beautiful trade. And earlier I said it took two hours. I think it took like an hour or so for this whole trade to play out and hit about a 2.4 to 1 reward to risk ratio. But this is a bearish version of the strategy. Hopefully that was extremely clear, but just to clear things up a little bit further and to give you an example of a bullish version of this, what we're going to do now is go to a different chart and take a look at a bullish version of this strategy. I'll see you there. So remember when I was saying that this works on all different markets and in all different time frames? right now, we're going to be looking for a trade on the 15 minute chart. So what time frame will I be looking at if that's the case for my trend identification to make sure I'm on the right side of the market with this trade? If I'm trading on the 15 minute, I want to look up at the one hour chart for my trend identification and that major swing level that was broken last. Just to be sure that you understand this, because it is a pivotal part of your trading career to understand major swing levels and how to draw out a trend. It will play a vital part in nearly any strategy that you try to trade. Or if you're just someone that is going to trade with a discretionary approach, you need to understand how to identify trends. So from this being our starting point, we have a push up to a major swing high, pull back to a major swing low, push up to a major swing high, pull back to a major swing low, push up. Where do we break this level? And remember, feel free. No way that's going to work. <laughs> remember, feel free to put horizontal lines at your major swing levels. So at this point, we know that this would be our major swing level if we had more of a pullback. Really, it's right here. Again, no way to make this completely objective. It just depends on how you see the market. From here, I would go to here, then move my horizontal line up. We have a major swing level that's broken here. So now we would have this move to a major swing level, back down to an equal low for our major swing level, back up now, where do we break here? Right over here, right? Since we broke right here, that means that I'm now looking at this as my next major swing level. This is my next major swing low, major swing high. If we move the chart forward now and I click the button one time, you'll see that we have this pullback. So what, what are we doing? We're in an uptrend. Which direction do we want to trade? to the upside, right? What do we need to point out? We need to point out and draw a zone near our last level of resistance, our last major swing level, which is these two right here. I'm combining them here because they are so close together height wise, since they're both really, really close to around the $278 mark. I'm just putting that in the middle of the zone. This is just how you'll have to draw out zones. They're not lines on a chart. Support and resistance are a lot more like zones. So in this case, we have our area 
that we're looking at, the previously broken major swing level. Again, we're just splitting the difference between these two because they're so close together. And we have the market in this area. What's the next step? At this point, we want to drop down to our actual trading time frame, which is going to be the 15 minute chart in this case. And now we can actually look for what are we looking for if we're looking for a bullish trade? It's not going to be a double top, right? We're going to be looking for a double bottom in this case. So there we have a push up. What we need to see is the market come down and now reject this area here. Somehow, some way, it needs to come down and show us rejection of that. And the way we do that is just by candles getting into that zone, whether that be by wicks or by candle bodies themselves, and then a green candle to show us buying pressure out of it. So if we keep pushing forward, we're in the zone, and now we're still in the zone, and boom, we now have a green candle. This would be our actual entry. The close of that candle slash the open of the next candle would be the entry for me and the way I trade this. After that, I would just have a stop loss below the lowest low of the rejection of the double bottom. After I had my stop loss place, my target would be back up at the previous resistance level right over here. And I would probably pick this one just because it's slightly lower than the other. So let's do that. Still set up with a 2.3 to 1 reward to risk ratio here on Litecoin. And let's see how this plays out. As you can see, the market takes off to the upside, easily hitting our targets. So that's a bullish version of this strategy. So now let's dive into a recap of everything here on the chart of Microsoft. As I said, works in all different markets and on all different time frames. We're looking at the four hour chart. After this, I have something extremely important to share with those of you who are actually serious about starting a day trading career. So look forward to that after we go through this recap. Right now, let's recap what we've already learned. Let's use every bit of that strategy here on Microsoft. So on Microsoft, we start from a starting point that is right down here. We have a push up to a major swing high, a pullback to a major swing low, a push up, a pullback. We're just drawing it out again as a recap and to make sure you completely understand this, pull back to here. When do we break above this high? Right here, okay? So we break above the high, we have another pullback, and this pullback then creates a new high for another major swing level. At this point, what's the trend on our four hour chart? We're gonna be trading on the one hour, so we just went up one time frame. On our four hour chart, we are in an uptrend. While we're in this uptrend, what is the latest major swing level that we broke? It is right here. This is the latest major swing level according to the rules of our trading strategy that we've broken. Now we have a pullback into that level. Let's drop down to a smaller time frame. If we're looking for the higher time frame trend and structure on the four hour, that means we're trading on the one hour. Again, as I explained earlier, and since this is a recap, I'll go over everything. So if you're on the five minute looking for trades, you look for structure and trend on 15. If you're on the one hour looking for trades, you look for structure and trend on the four hour. And if you're on the four hour looking for trades, you look at the daily for your trend and structure. Now let's drop down to our trading time frame. What are we looking for here? Well, in the case of a bullish trade, we'd be looking for a double bottom. Does this meet the rules for our double bottom? Yes, it does. We have a push down. We have a bottom. We then have a neckline. We're looking for a retest of this area without closing below it that gives us buying pressure. We then get a green candle followed by an even bigger green candle, which is where our entry would be on that buying pressure candle. For a stop loss, we would go below this low and I use something called an ATR indicator. I have a full video for that. It's up in the left hand side of your screen, right hand side of your screen, wherever it's at. It's in the cards. You'll be able to see it. It should pop up right now. ATR is right up here. And what it shows me is that we currently have a $2.31 ATR. It gives you the average movement of the last 14 candles. It's pretty much what the ATR does to keep you in line with the volatility of the market. So below our swing low, I want to go down $2.31. If our swing low is at 185.20, then I want to be at somewhere around 182.89 for my stop loss. So 182. 89 that's going to be close enough even though it says 92 i want my target to be back up at previous resistance right up here the previous major swing high then i hit play we'll see how this plays out 
and as you can see eventually coming up and hitting those targets we did have a little gap down here but it didn't even come close to the stop loss so there is a recap of every part of the strategy hopefully that was good enough to get you to a point of completely understanding the strategy but the strategy is not all you need look on my neck right now this is a triangle and there is a reason that i'm wearing triangle jewelry today and it's because i want to share something extremely important for those of you who are serious about your trading this is something you must master and that is the triangle of trading success so the triangle of trading success if you have not heard of it is three skills that you must have in order to make money in any financial market if you're a day trader swing trader long-term investor it does not matter everyone that makes money trading in financial markets has these three skills mastered the first one is exactly what we went over today they have a strategy that they can stay consistent to and that makes money over time this is a huge part of trading success but it, it's not everything in any way shape or form you also must have a risk management plan that keeps you out of your emotions and initially keeps you from blowing your account the strategy we just looked at is a strategy that wins somewhere around it's a little bit less than 50 but somewhere around 50 percent of the time and has a two to one reward to risk ratio this provides me with an edge this provides me with a money-making strategy over long periods of time but if i risk my entire account value on my first trade then I have a fit it's gambling. I have a 50 50 chance of losing. That's why we need a risk management plan in place that keeps us in the market long enough, gives us chips and a chair at a poker table in order to let this edge play out because otherwise we're just gambling. So the important part of this is to be sure that initially our risk management plan keeps us from really having the chance to blow an account. There's always a chance, but it reduces that chance by 99%. And the second part of a risk management plan is to keep you out of your emotions, to keep fear and greed from controlling your decisions while you're placing trades in any financial market. The way we keep that fear and greed from controlling us is by making the amount we lose per trade being small enough for us to be able to handle because you will lose trades. I have losing trades. You will have losing trades, but the important part is not to let them affect you emotionally because if they affect you emotionally, you might make mistakes that ruin your edge, that ruin your statistic advantage, and that ruin your money-making strategy. And all of this is irrelevant if you can't find a way to have good trading psychology or discipline is what this is also known as. Trading psychology, it allows you to stick to that strategy, to not have FOMO, not switch strategies, to not just place trades because you just got stopped out of one and now you're going to go super aggressive and you're going to risk more than normal because you just lost a trade and you want to try to make that money back all of that is emotional mistakes due to having bad trading psychology so this is something you must absolutely master in order to create a profitable trading career that was a little bonus on the other things you need outside of a strategy and if you're struggling with any of this and you want a sped up version of getting from wherever you are to creating a professional trading career then we do have some space available in the eap training program it's the first link in the description it's our mentorship program and throughout that course we take you step by step through each of these what we do first is teach you the basics of whatever market you're trading. In the case of the EAP, it's for Forex, but that's just the basics. Everything else applies to any market that you trade. And what we do after that is teach one strategy that has been proven to make money over time for me and that is so rules-based, you can have a checklist beside your desk. Once all of your rules are checked off, you can then enter the trade. We have set in stone rules for stops for targets with these strategies. The full training course goes through strategies, goes through risk management directly after that, goes through back testing, and then teaches you how to build a solid trading plan. Included with the program as well is what we call the best setups of the week video. Every Monday, I'll be shooting a video telling you about what I'm seeing in the market for the week ahead in terms of the best setups I see. I'll also be sending you three to five trade alerts per week. And on top of all of that, it is a mentor program. So it comes with what's called priority email, meaning any trading related questions you have. It will be me answering those questions personally. And the best part of all is that the EAP training program comes with a 60 day money back guarantee. So if you are for any reason not satisfied or feel as though the money you have spent has not been worth it for the knowledge you're gaining, 
email us and I'll have my support staff send you a refund ASAP. Kind of a no risk offer. If you're interested in that, again, it's the top link in the description. If not, that's totally fine too. Just make sure you keep it locked here by subscribing, clicking that notification bell to be alerted about the free content we come out with each and every week. With that said, I'm going to let you guys go. I hope you trade green and I'll talk to you in the next video. See you soon.